We'll serve him, we'll serve him, for he is worthy. And choose you this day, oh tell me who will you serve? Let nothing stand in your way, give the praise he deserves. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Isn't that the prettiest little girl you have ever seen in your life? Yes, Joe, who is that pretty little girl? That is Aurora Chase. That's my little niece. Isn't she beautiful? She looks just like her Uncle Joe. <laughs> beautiful blue eyes, and from what I hear, she has the same demeanor as, as her sweet uncle. And what a blessing to her mama and daddy she is, and to all to whom she comes into contact. Now I repent for lying, <laughs> and uh, that is a sweet baby, but not as sweet as me. As John Paul read just a few moments ago, Corinth had a lot of problems. Corinth had division going on left and right. They were dividing into to groups. One group couldn't get along with the other group. This group couldn't get along with that group. And problem after problem was arising within the church at Corinth. And, and Paul makes this statement. He says, I, I couldn't speak to you as spiritual people. You had not grown to the point of maturity, therefore, I had to treat you like babies. I had to take you back to the fundamentals of faith on loving God and loving each other, and I couldn't, I couldn't bring you to that strong meat because you had not grown. So the question this morning is, how are you eating and what are you eating? The question to ourselves is, am, am I still a baby? Am I still feasting on or eating food that is for someone that is much younger than I am? Or am I reaching the point of spiritual maturity to where I can truly discern the will of God in my life? There comes a time in each and every one of our lives when we have to move past the diet of babies and start eating the food of adults. And basically that's a, a, a metaphor for growing to spiritual maturity. That I'm able to handle myself as an adult Christian, that I'm able to discern the will of God in my life and I'm growing to the point that I can now do the will of God and not have someone else do it for me. So Paul says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and Behaving only in a human way? Our spirits need to be growing. Now let's talk about a little bit about milk and meat, okay? Milk and meat are similar, aren't they? Think about it. Milk and meat are similar. They have a lot of the same content. They have protein. They have fat. They, they both have the same makeup, basically. They just come in different forms. <coughs> Why do you think that is? Why do you think they're the same? They come from the same place. <laughs> now, if we were talking to people of uh, the time of Jesus, we'd have had to put a, a, a goat up there or a sheep up there. Have you ever had goat's milk? Goat's milk beats cow's milk any day of the week. I'm telling you, it's good stuff. It's naturally homogenized. It's great, great for you. Great food, uh, especially if it's straight from the goat. Now, you should milk the goat, but uh, the, the closer it is to fresh, the better off you are. But have you noticed that, that, that we start off 
with the simple and we go to the mature to the maturity this idea goes even from from the time we start in school we start with the same basic things of reading writing arithmetic two plus two is four four plus four is eight then where do you go to you go from adding and subtracting to multiplication and division and then you go from what? You go from multiplication and division to those stupid story problems where uh, Uncle Milton had 27 burrows that carried a train 27 miles north who's the driver of the bus. You know, those never made any sense. But really, in, in our learning process, we're not able to do algebra. By the way, Cheryl, is that correct? Is my formula right for the triangle the area of a triangle is ba is half of the base time the height right yes. see I have a smart wife and she has a husband that can ask her questions all the time but it's basically the same thing it's still numbers well now we have some letters you know I never did think pi r square every pi I ever had are round think about that for a moment are not square when we read we start off with little words and then they get more complex and more complex the storylines get longer and longer and we go from C spot run C Dick and Jane how many of you had the Dick and Jane readers when you were in school do they still use those they don't use them anymore how tragic what a want I mean Sally that cute little baby and spot and what was the cat's name? Puff. Wasn't the cat's name Puff? I still read those books. but. <laughs> and then we go from that to more complex things. The stories get longer and more involved. And pretty soon we're reading War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. But it's still made up of letters and words. The concepts are just more difficult. Spiritual milk and meat have the same content. They start from the same place. Spiritual meat and milk are the words of God. It's just that we go from the very basic ideas of how to, how to come to Christ to how to live in Christ. And it gets a little more complex and a little more complex and a little more difficult and a little more difficult and eventually uh, we become mature adults and what a sad sad thing it would be for us to still be to be in Christ for 10 15 20 40 50 60 years and we're still not able to discern the will of God when I was preaching at Tenney Hall Texas there was a lady there that was 86 years old 86 she'd been a Christian since she was somewhere around 13 or 14 she couldn't remember she came up to me and she said I finally did it I said what I read my Bible from cover to cover well it just took you 70 years to do it what what is wrong with that picture she couldn't understand why I didn't get excited about that well it's about time we as Christians need to realize that we cannot stay infants. We cannot stay babies. We've got to go on to maturity. Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. All of us ate the same spiritual food. We all drank the same spiritual drink. What was that? The Word of God. That which was revealed for the Holy Spirit. But the condition of milk and the condition of meat are different. When you think about the, well, milk is liquid. Meat is solid. And you know, milk is easy to swallow. And if you're not lactose intolerant, by the way, if you drink goat's milk, you wouldn't have lactose intolerancy. And I'm not on the goat milk board. <laughs> but milk is easy to digest. Meat is. 
Why do you give milk to babies? They don't have choppers. They cannot chew. So you give them liquid. You give them soft food. Then they work their way up to solid, solid food. Milk is easy to divide. It's easy to handle. It's easy to combine. It's easy to transport. It's easy to distribute. Meat, on the other hand, you've got to have a, a knife. You have to have a, a fork. It weighs a lot more, transporting it, caring for it, distributing it, takes a lot more effort than milk. For milk, all you need is a bottle. For meat, you've got to have all the other accoutrements which it takes to use it. Spiritual milk and meat, let's compare those to this morning, one to the other. The Bible teaches us that there are simple teachings of the Word of God, and then there are complex, difficult things for us to understand. If you would, let's, let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6. Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, says, Wherefore, leaving the doctrine of the first principles of Christ, let us press on to perfection. By the way, perfection doesn't mean that you never sin. Perfection there just means that you're mature, you're complete. Press on to completion, to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the teaching of baptisms and of the laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Those are things that, that the newly born into Christ deal with. However, there are times when we get to the point that we need to deal with difficult subjects. There comes a time when after we know God's will for us as children, we look to God to, to direct us in our adulthood. Notice with me in 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, down in verse 15, Peter writes... And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you, as also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of things in which some are hard to understand, which they who are unlearned and unstable rest, as also they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Peter's saying there comes a point to where you're going to have to dig. You're going to have to use your spiritual judgment. You're going to have to exercise your gray matter in order to comprehend and in order to use these things. And it's difficult. Bible study is not something that is easy. If we're still studying first principles 20 years into our uh, journey in Christ, there's something wrong. We need to move on and move to greater and higher, loftier pursuits than just the first principles that are in Christ. Well, we've read those passages. Now, we consume milk. We consume meat differently. Taking them in in different ways. Milk goes down easy. You don't even have to chew it. But meat... You cut it into small pieces and you chew it until you can swallow it. By the way, do you know what the biggest choking hazard amongst food is? There's three of them. For children, it's hot dogs. For adults, it's steak and shrimp. More people choke on steak and shrimp than anything else. That's hard food to eat. You, you, need, you need to chew it. You need to get it into smaller pieces to go down your throat. You can't just hog down a hot dog. My cousin Jess has a little girl. Well, had a little girl. She's out of college now. Uh, one Sunday we were having lunch at their house. And I looked over and that little girl looked like a... Have you ever seen an egg-bound chicken? You know, she just stood up straight like this in her chair... Her eyes were popped out, and she wasn't making any sound at all. 
and she had a whole hot dog go down her gullet. Why anybody put a whole hot dog on a baby's plate, I don't know. Jess recognized what was going on. He went over there and grabbed her by the arms and pulled her straight up, and you've never seen a hot dog travel so far in your life. It went out, boom, and she was fine. But babies, you have to watch, and you have to be careful with them as they begin to eat solid food. We have people here who are babes in Christ that are going to wrestle with difficult decisions. In fact, some of the decisions that you and I have, have committed to our hearts and they're no problem at all to us anymore are a major struggle for newborn babes. You and I probably, those of us who have been in the church for a long time, really don't have to decide on Saturday night whether or not we're going to church on Sunday morning, right? That decision was made a long time ago, and we've gotten used to that, and it's a part of our life. But a new Christian who is still learning how to fight the temptation in their life, it's a struggle for them to make the decision to attend worship. It's, it's a struggle for them to decide to pray every day and to read their Bible every day. And so we have to deal with them differently than somebody who has been a child of God for many years. And our discipline should be different as well. Paul will say, I came among you as a nursemaid. What does a nursemaid do? Feeds the baby. Feeds them with compassion and tenderness. But Paul then says to rebuke the elders, not elder elders, but rebuke those who are older in the faith rebuke them sharply for the false teaching that they're teaching. So there's a big difference with how I treat young babies in Christ and the adult. We, food has to be chewed the way. Spiritual milk is given to babies for the purpose of growth, to get them to the point that they're ready to receive the Word of God. We cannot expect babies to know how to do things that full-grown adults know how to do. Spiritual meat is given to those who are grown, so we should be hungering for what? Not milk, but meat. Don't you just want a steak? Don't you just want a big, fat, juicy steak with the juice just running out and maybe some, I don't know, some mushrooms on top and and maybe a, I don't know, maybe a couple of pieces of shrimp on top of that. Are you getting hungry yet? When you say that I want to sit down and have a meal, do you say, well, I would like some Gerber graduates today. Give me my binky. Give me my passy. So I don't have to work hard at eating my food. Problems occur... When you try to give milk to baby, I mean, when you try to give meat to babies, babies cannot chew the food. The same thing is true with adults. What happens if you have a diet only of milk? You'll never grow. You'll just be a big, fat baby. That's all you'll be. Would it bother you if we took Chloe back there and just gave her, a, gave her a big slab of meat and said, go for it, girl? Would it bother you if we took Brooklyn and gave her a turkey leg and said, here's your food, and just left her there? No, we know that that wouldn't work. In fact, it would be dangerous and reckless. Can you see that picture? Turn off those lights on This is one of the most disgusting things I have ever seen in my life. Here is a 40-year-old man who is dressing up like a baby, drinks his food from a bottle, sits in a high chair, and is taken care of. And this is a daily occurrence 
with this human being. Does that turn your stomach a little bit? Okay, you can turn them back on. <laughs> Problems happen when we should be, at the time that we ought to be teachers, we are sitting in the high chair saying, give me my binky. Brethren, there comes a time that we should be grown up and that we should desire challenging things that we should desire moving beyond the first principles. In fact, Paul tells, or the writer of Hebrews tells us, that there comes a time when you ought to be teaching the Word of God. That you ought to know the will of God enough to be able to teach it. How, how many of you have ever taught a Bible class? And isn't it more difficult to teach the class than it is to learn in the class. You have to do a lot more prep time sit to, to put your lesson together. And if you ever want to be challenged as a Bible class teacher, teach children who are 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade. They will come up with more questions that you will not have the answer to than any other age group. And they're, they're unabashed in their inquisition. They will ask you questions that will, you'll wonder who in the world even thinks about stuff like that. But in order to teach, you have to know. You have to not be a child any longer. There comes a time when we must grow past milk, demanding milk when it's time to eat meat is a spiritual sin. When we ought to be eating meat to return to spiritual infancy is a breaking of God's will and God's way. So I asked the question this morning, what are you eating? And how are you eating it? When I was in preacher school, I uh, got a real bad case of ulcerative colitis and diverticulitis. And the doctor said, okay, you are no longer going to eat solid food. And he gave me a blender and I ground up all of my food and I, I basically ate liquids for six months. I lost a lot of weight. Maybe I need to go back and do that. But there came a point to where there was a craving just to have something to chew on. This drinking your food just got to be so bleh. And you know, you can't really blend up a steak very well. <laughs> and if you could, you don't want to eat it. So what are you eating? Answer that honestly. Are you still eating like a baby? And eating the diet of a baby? Or are you balanced and growing? and reaching for new things. Challenging yourself to become full grown in Christ. What happens when we don't get the food that we need? We become stilted. We become stymied. And it's unhealthy. Are you healthy today because you have a well-balanced diet? Oh, I love going back and preaching sermons on how to become a Christian. I love that. It's because it's so easy. And I know those scriptures forward and backward. But when it comes to daily living, those sermons are a challenge for me because I see in me my need to grow and my need to live the way God wants me to. So I challenge myself week after week to not only grow myself, but to help you grow. How are you growing? What are you eating? What are you using? What are your utensils that you're using? That'll tell you a whole lot. We're asking God to this morning to change our hearts through his word. And that we will change in such a way that we're ready to receive the next level in Christ. 
I would like for all of you to write down where you are today spiritually. Six months from now, I want you to revisit this and see how much you've grown. How much more of the Bible do you know six months from now and then a year from now? And see, are you growing? Have you grown? Or are you on high center? If you need to change, we're going to ask the elders to come forward and receive anybody that comes forward. Uh, while together we stand and sing. Change my heart, oh 